All right, so let's talk about the properties here. Um, first property states that if we have a vector dotted with itself, so a dot a, it's the same thing as the magnitude of a squared. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, how that works. So if we've got vector a, which we're just going to define to be some generic vector with a1, a2, a3 as its component, so a three-dimensional vector. If we want to dot it with itself, well, that's a1 times a1, a1 times a1, plus a2 times a2, plus a3 times a3. And if you just kind of simplify that, since these are now just numbers, that's a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. <clears throat> now, if you think back, if you recall, the magnitude of a was defined to be each component squared added together, and then you take the square root. So it's a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. So then if I were to take that and square it, I get a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared, which is exactly the same as the dot product of itself. So that does show that a vector dotted with itself is just the magnitude of that vector squared. Okay, the second one says that I've got a dot b, and that is going to equal b dot a. Well, so let's see, a dot b. Well, I guess I kind of have to define a B. So let's define B up at the top here just to be B1, B2, B3. So now we've got A dot B. So that's going to be A1, B1, A1. Oops, that's not a vector anymore. Get rid of that. A1, B1 plus A2, B2 plus A3, b3. And supposedly that's supposed to equal b dot a. Well, b dot a is going to be basically the same idea, except this time it's going to be b1 a1 plus b2 a2 plus b3 a3. And because all those things are just numbers and um, multiplication is commutative, um, I can reverse the order a1 b1 and b1 a1. These two things are the same. So every component is the same. So really, and this B1, A1, B2, A2, B3, A3 is just B dot A. So what it says is the dot product is commutative. The dot product is commutative. Order does not matter which way you dot it. All right, and we're going to do one more. We're going to do a dot, um, the quantity of b plus c, and that's supposed to equal a dot b plus a dot c. So um, c is just going to be defined as c1, c2, c3. I'm just not going to write that part down right there, um, but that's what it is. So what we have is we have a1, oops, should be a2, not b1. A1, A2, A3, dotted with, well, B plus C is going to be another vector. I'm just adding two vectors together. So B plus C is B1 plus C1, B2 plus C2, B3 plus C3. Okay, that's B plus C. And if I'm going to dot those two things together, I'm going to multiply A1 times the first component, B1 uh, plus C1. So if I distribute, if I distribute this A1 to B1 plus C1, what I end up with is A1 B1 plus A1 C1. And then I'll do the same thing 
adding together the next one, which is going to be A2B2 plus A2C2 plus A3B3 plus A3C3. And then if you look, A1B1, A2B2, and A3B3 is really just A dot B. And remember, everything in that orange row now is just, they're just numbers being multiplied and added together. And we know that multiplication and addition are both commutative and associative, so I can reassociate those things or reorder them in any way that I want to. So A1, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, that's just A dot B. And then everything here underlined in blue is just A dot C. So what that shows is that the A dot parentheses B plus C is exactly the same thing as A dot B plus A dot C. All right, your book also covers the associative property and the zero product property. Um, the associative property just means, again, you can reorder them in any order that you want to. Um, and then the um, zero product property, um, if you remember from basic algebra stuff, says that if you have two numbers multiplied together and the product of those equals zero, then at least one of those numbers must have been zero. Same general idea here. If we multiply two vectors together through a dot product and we end up with a zero vector, at least one of those vectors had to probably had to be zero. Technically, that's not the case. Um, and I can show you an example of that, but the zero product property still holds in the fact that at least one, if at least one vector is zero, then the um, zero vector will be held. All right, and we're going to come back, and in the next video, we're going to go through the next two pages, which is going to be the meaning of this, and then in the last video, our fourth video, we'll go through all the examples at the end.